got the sound of pounding on your door, police burst into your home, arrested you, accused you of something that you've never done before. On the days that follow, you suffer unbearable physical and psychological pain, having your body painted with chili powder, punching, kicking, just to force you to confess to something that you know nothing about. This is not a scene from a movie. It is a reality that has happened to many who are subjected to torture. Ladies and gentlemen, according to the UN Convention Against Torture, the key elements of torture includes the infliction of pain and suffering. It's done by a public authority with a particular purpose. Torture is a violation of the fundamental human rights. It attacks the body and the soul, crippling a person's ability to love, trust, and live a fulfilling life. You might wonder why torture happened in the first place. It usually happened during interrogation, where police wish to inflict fear to coerce information and confession. From 2018 to 2020, Sorum recorded more than 440 cases of death in custody in Malaysia, including death in prison and immigration centre. This makes up to 12 cases a month and one in every three days. When the police, who is supposed to be our guardian of safety, engage in such a barbarity, this creates an environment of fear shattering the trust of the citizens towards the institution. Ladies and gentlemen, instead of delving into the darkness of the past, let's shed light into the future. Four practical steps can be made. First, at the international level, ratification of the UNCAT. Second, at institutional level, the implementation of Mandat's principle. Third, the reform of the independent oversight body. And lastly, creating awareness among the public. First, on ratification. Regrettably, Malaysia has yet to ratify the UNCAT, leaving behind many countries. Ratification is important because it shows the state commitment to looking at this issue seriously and to take measures to overcome torture. However, it is easier to be said than done. In Malaysia, considering the local circumstances, some do opine that Sharia punishment, such as caning, is actually part of their religious teaching, religious teaching. Hence, considering the local circumstances, the path towards ratification is indeed not easy and might take some time. Then, what should we do? The answer lies in the implementation of the Mendes Principle, which essentially incorporates the key elements of the UNCAT. Mendes Principle is the result of a four-year expert-driven drafting process. It provides comprehensive framework on the non-coercive interviewing process as well as the procedural safeguards. Traditionally, our interrogation method tend to be coercive, manipulative, and with one objective in mind, to obtain confession. And because of this, this creates a risk of torture because police might think that the easiest and fastest way to get the confession is by giving ill treatment. However, if you were to change the objective of interrogation into building rapport as provided under the Mendes principle, this can reduce the strain on the interviewees, leading to a more comprehensive, truthful, and actionable information. And to implement this, at the initial stage, training can be done by NGOs such as SORAM. And at the later stage, ideally, this should be incorporated in their training syllabus. On to the third solution, ladies and gentlemen, the reform of an independent oversight body. Currently, we do have IPCC, but it is deemed to be a toothless tiger because of its limited investigation power and can only make mere recommendations. Ideally, a commission should be first independent, second, have the power to carry out investigation, and most importantly, can take disciplinary action against the police, and not just simply making recommendation which is not binding at all. 
Therefore, with this, this helps to improve the transparency of the police and ensures that the complaint can be handled more effectively. Last and not least, ladies and gentlemen, as public, me and you, what can we do? We can support the initiative organised by the NGOs, for instance, the anti-torture campaign, or like our speech competition, Safe in Custody speech competition today, where all of you had attended here physically, you can share the information online and even have a discussion to create awareness on this issue. Hence, in conclusion, with the collective effort from all stakeholders, we can definitely move towards a society with dignity upheld, voices heard, and justice prevails. Thank you. Thank you so much to Li Shi Yi for that wonderful speech. And I agree, IPCMC now, hashtag it. Now we move on to our third.